Good evening. How are you? All right. Are your bellies full? That's a good thing. As long as you don't fall asleep on me, that's a good thing. All right. So on Wednesday nights, welcome to Recharge. Uh, appreciate Chad filling in for me last week. Um, here he did an amazing job. So thank him for that. We're going to pick up where we were. Uh, we've been walking through on Wednesday nights and I, I've been talking about heaven. I've been trying to unfold a bit by bit theology of heaven and uh, even have had you ask questions. And a number of you uh, wrote me emails and questions. And so uh, tonight I'm going to be tackling one of those questions, but I want to do it in a particular way. Um, but remember just how good and how right and how important it is for us to continually think about our eternal home and all that Jesus has that awaits us um, and what it will be like. And so this question that I'm going to chase is along those lines. And it, it goes like this. We've talked about this a little bit, but the question is, is right, will we learn in heaven? Okay. Will we learn in heaven? Okay. Uh, let me read a scripture verse that goes along these lines and can lead to a little confusion uh, the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, that now we see, but in a poor reflection, as in a mirror, then we will see face to face. Now I know in part, but then we shall know fully, even as I am fully known even as I am fully known. Now, this in some parts can lead to some confusion with the idea that maybe you and I will be omniscient when we're in heaven because we will be fully known or we will know fully. But let me unpack this passage just a little bit. It, it, when this is speaking about us, it is not speaking in the, in the essence that you and I will have absolute knowledge. Rather, um, if you pay attention to the way that that being that knowing here is unfolded, there is an intense relationship component to being known. Remember, that's the way, listen to how this passage ends. Even as I will be fully known. That is a relationship component about uh, the fact that you will be known by King Jesus and, and in that no longer seeing dimly in a mirror. By the way, in the ancient world, mirrors were very poor, okay? Um, really poor. They, they, they had like bronze mirrors that, that you could see your reflection, but the color would be off. And uh, you guys know what happens if a mirror is not completely flat, right? You get all sorts of goofy shapes, that go along with it. Well, well this, was, this was well known, right? And so listen to what Paul's saying. Now we see as in a mirror, which is poor quality, but then we will see face to face and we will be fully known and then we will know fully. It's actually this unfolding of relationship. It goes along the lines with, when I see him, then I will be like him. In other words, the, the compelling, the important, the emphasis, the exciting part is the fact that because we will see King Jesus as he is, that perspective changes everything. That's his point in this passage. Now, elsewhere I can show you, um, like in, um, <clears throat> in Ephesians 2, 6, and 7, it tells us that uh, God raised us up with Christ and seated uh, us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomprehensible riches of his grace. 
Now that show there means that he is going to reveal. In other words, that all of heaven is going to be a continual revealing of the grace upon grace upon all that Christ has done for us and our knowledge of him. In other words, we will be increasing in knowledge and it will be unfolding and it will be unfolding. Okay, so why do I bring this point? <clears throat> that is that the emphasis in scripture is that you know God and yourself in such a way that it unlocks a key that changes your perspective on everything. Here's the question that I was asked, and it's a very difficult one, but I've given you most the foundation for the answer. The question goes like this. When, will, when we are in heaven, will we know about hell? Because some of our loved ones are there, or just the knowledge of people being separated from God forever. In fact, it has even been proposed, maybe the only answer in that context is that we will somehow simply forget. Maybe we'll just forget and not even be able to know about hell is the only way that some people have proposed that we can deal with this complexity. <laughs> well, one, that's not the way God ever works. That's not the gospel by simply forgetting. This is the cool part about your sin and the truth about your sin, that Jesus died for your sin on the cross and in your redemption and your forgiveness is not in the forgetfulness of God. It's at the fact that he stared straight at your sin. He called it what he was, and he still forgave it. He paid the debt for it, right? Your, your overcoming sin is God, the holy God of the universe, staring right at it and paying for it. Not, not absent-minded forgiveness. Well, the same is true in regards to even the judgment in hell itself. That is that our happiness will not be contingent upon simply forgetting or having it wiped out of our memory um, that some people are in hell. But rather, let's go back to the seeing part. You will see him and you will know him as he is. And that truth of seeing and knowing and understanding God, up to this point, you and I, we only see dimly in a mirror. All of our thinking is, is so short-sighted and, and minimal that what happens when you and I see him, we will also see his justice. We will also see and, and be able to comprehend his, his wrath upon sin and complete rebellion against him. And when we see him, we will understand differently. And we will understand that through it all, God was just and God was right. And as difficult as it is, we will see things from God's perspective and we will have understanding. There's your fuller answer to an incredibly difficult but important question. In one sense, it gives us a tremendous longing. You will see him as he is. And through that, you will be fully known. Oh, what's that going to be like? What's that going to be like? But we also remember that the Lord is patient and that where we are now, Jesus has not returned. Eternity has not begun. There is still time. If it is still called today, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that we pray and we beg and we plead for all to come to salvation in Christ Jesus so that they too can be fully 
known. Will you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, for its seriousness. God, even for questions that are far above our pay grade, they are yours. And you stand as creator and the eternal one. And we trust you in that. We take you at your word and at your promises that you will wipe away every tear from our eye, that you will comfort us with a comfort that allows us and matures us to know and to understand even the great things that you are about. And one day we will see you and we will be fully known and we will rejoice at your complete and holy and perfect character. Help us to shine your light now as we walk and while today is still called today and the offer of salvation through your son is made available. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.